what's remarkable and fun about dog cognition is I think dogs are just a wonderful example of what cognition actually is. You can be absolutely genius in one area, one type of intelligence, and you can be completely vapid in another. And that, that's why we love dogs. You know, you think about why you love them so much. It's because you connect with them, because they interact with you, that you feel like they're communicating with you, and they are. And they use us uh, to solve problems they can't solve on their own. But at the same time, how many times have you seen them do something like, how could you be so silly? I mean, really, you don't understand that? And probably they don't. And that's the beauty of being a dog. Um, but that really helps define what cognition is, is cognition is not that there's one number that measures intelligence. It's actually a whole range of abilities, um, and they're not always correlated. And you can be, you know, really a genius in one area and not in the other. Everybody wants to know about breeds and breed differences. Um, but uh, I think it's surprising to many people there's no science. Um, and the reason is because it's a really hard problem. And if we have uh, a community of dog lovers study tens of thousands of dogs and contribute and learn about their own dog, we'll be able to learn about all dogs. We study dog psychology um, uh, to understand basically what it's like to be not human. Because the underlying assumption uh, that we operate under is that if we understand what it's like to be human, you have to understand what it is to be not human. Um, and, uh, you know, not only that, but dogs are, uh, you know, very prevalent in our society and they do a lot of jobs. It's kind of surprising that they do so many jobs. Um, and so we're hoping that things we learn can help us help dogs do their jobs even better. Dogs became um, dogs because they were selected to be more friendly. Um, and we're suspicious that maybe that's what happened as um, bonobos um, evolved from a more chimp-like uh, ancestor. Um, and that basically bonobos evolved do the same process. Now, it doesn't take uh, you know, a big jump to then say, well, if it happened to dogs and it happened to bonobos, what about our own species? You know, when I think about uh, cognition and sort of who's the most intelligent species on the planet, I mean, it's not hard to be very proud to be a human. Um, you know, I have an iPad and I fly on airplanes and, you know, I follow the news and I know that, you know, that uh, uh, Voyagers entered the heliosphere and, um, you know, we have the International Space Station and, of course, there's the Internet. So how in the world could you accept anything but that humans, humans are the most intelligent species? Well, if you celebrate all the things we can do, you start forgetting the things we, that we um, also are a little bit ashamed of. So, you know, we have problems taking care of the environment. Um, we obviously, um, universally, if you look across every continent where there are humans, there has been genocide in the last 200 years. Um, we have a really hard time cooperating, um, small scale actually. Um, and I would, I, I would suggest to many people that there's some species, some other species that are way better at some of those things than we are. Just as one example, again, is the bonobo. We have a wonderful study showing that when you give bonobos the choice of um, either sharing something with somebody they are good friends with or sharing something with somebody that they have never met before, well, they do something that people would never do. Um, and when you ask people this question, you can think about it yourself. What would you do? If I gave you $100, would you share it with somebody you know or would you give it to somebody you've never met before? Well, pretty universally, everybody says, well, I give it to somebody I know, of course. Well, bonobos do the exact opposite they actually prefer to share with somebody they've never met before. Now imagine if we were a species where our preference was to extend our social network and we understand that we treasure the friends we have but we actually prefer to make new friends and we like strangers and we're so pro-social that we want to make sure that we reach out to people we don't know and bring them into our network. How different would our species be? And who's more intelligent? I mean, bonobos don't kill each other. 